From her aversion to summer to the red color of her coats, today we're going to let you in on 10 secrets the Royal Guard doesn't want you to know. For you and me, summer is synonymous with good weather, vacations, beaches, and relaxation, which is not the case for the Guard of Her Majesty the Queen of England. Indeed, although the Royal Guards try to keep this information secret, they hate summer. Is there a reason for this aversion to summer, or is it just a British whim? To find out, we're going to do a little experiment that consists in putting you in the skin of a Queen's Guard. We are in the middle of August. It's hot. You've been standing in front of Buckingham Palace for two hours under a blazing sun. And to top it all off, you're obviously wearing your uniform. This one consists of thick woolen pants, a very heavy jacket, and a fur hat, nothing else. I think it is now useless to give you more explanation. I am sure that you also hate summer now, especially since you are about to pass out, like many of your colleagues. So it's high time to stop this experiment that almost turned into torture. However, you now understand better why soldiers tend to faint in the heat. Talking about the very hot uniforms of the Royal Guard and especially their fur hats, do you know what these headgear, almost 50 centimeters high and weighing in at 680 grams, typical of the Royal Guard, are made of? First of all, if you are a fervent defender of the animal cause, what I am about to reveal will surely make you mad. So take a deep breath. These hats, which cost 650 pounds each and have a lifespan of 80 years, are made from Canadian black bear fur. And if you're not outraged enough, know that it takes an entire bear to make one hat. Now you are very angry and indignant about such a practice, but you are not alone in thinking that it is a cruel act to turn bears into hats for the Queen's guards. That's why the identity of the company that makes them is a closely guarded secret. However, even the British Army is not very proud of the origin of its hats. That's why it has already tried various synthetic substitutes for the skins, but so far, the synthetic fur hats lose their shape in strong winds and get waterlogged in heavy rains. Now, if you want to help Canadian bears, you know what you have to do. Come up with a substitute that is as durable and as comfortable as natural fur. It doesn't get much funnier than the videos circulating on the internet of tourists taunting the Royal Guards, imitating them, mocking them, or even poking them with sharp objects to try to get them to react. But have you ever wondered what the Queen's Guards think about the actions of these tourists? Although they may seem impassive to you, because they are trained and armed soldiers on duty to protect and serve the royal family, they are no less human. So every time a carefree tourist mocks or disrespects one of the Queen's Guards, it makes for some funny footage on the net. But we always forget that behind their uniforms, there are just men like you and me trying to do their job as best they can, and God knows how hard their job is. So even if what these soldiers feel is a secret, because they have to be cold and unresponsive all the time, it doesn't mean that the disrespectful actions of the tourists don't affect them. On the contrary, these acts affect them deeply and they hate, like any human being, to be mocked. Now you feel guilty for having mocked the British Royal Guards too. But what's done is done. At least you only laughed behind your screens and did not disrespect the Royal Guard directly. And what is sure is that if you find yourself one day in front of Buckingham Palace, you will not behave any differently with these soldiers in red jackets and bare hats. Although their humanity is unquestionable, the Royal Guards do not laugh on duty, no matter what situation they face. Even though many people over the years have tried to put themselves in hilarious situations only to see one of the Royal Guards crack even a small smile, they have always failed, with a few exceptions. But why do the Queen's Guards refrain from smiling? Despite appearances, the Royal Guards are not immune to jokes. However, they are professional soldiers on duty, and like soldiers in any army in the world, they are trained to follow a certain discipline and to be on the lookout for danger at all times. That's why they are not allowed to deviate from the rules, let alone be human and smile. And if they don't strictly adhere to this rule, which may seem inhumane, the British Army can secretly punish them by forcing them to pay a 250 euro fine. It's pretty shocking to have to pay a fine for an innocent smile, but what can you say? Joining the army is no small matter. It's a career choice that must be carefully considered. While on duty in front of the Queen of England's palaces, a royal guard must be irreproachable. So much so that even the smallest of movements must be made according to strict secret rules predefined by the British Army. For example, when a royal guard needs to stretch his legs, he can't do it just any old way, but rather by following the protocol. That is, turn left, take 10 steps, turn around and come back to a stop. This procedure must be followed to the millimeter or risk being disciplined by a superior officer. And if these 10 steps are not enough to get the blood flowing in the legs, the Royal Guard must wait 10 minutes to move again, following the same protocol, of course, right? 10 steps and then turn around. It must be said that nothing is left to chance with the British Army. Let's go back to the uniforms of the Royal Guard again. 
Nothing represents the soldiers of Her Majesty the Queen better than the iconic red tunics. But do you know the secret behind the garish red color? You'll tell me the answer is well known. In wartime, it was more practical to wear red to hide bloodstains. Well, you're not there at all. For one, because blood leaves black stains on red clothing when it dries. And two, it's more a matter of production cost than anything else. Almost 400 years ago, when the British Royal Guard started wearing those famous red coats, it was the cheapest color. And it was fitting because red is also the favorite color of royalty. I have a feeling that the secret behind this red color is very disappointing to you. And you're right. It was much cooler to think that the color choice was to hide the bloodstains. Now that you knew some of the secret and absurd rules of the British Royal Guard, like the ban on smiling or the way to stretch your legs, you're probably thinking that I've already covered it all and can't think of any other rules as unbelievable as those I've already shared with you. However, the best is yet to come. What could be more insane than punishing a guard for a damn smile? Well, even if I leave you all day, you won't be close to finding the answer, so I won't drag out the suspense. One of the most secret and bizarre rules in the British Army involves a strict protocol to follow when guards are feeling dizzy. This means that they are not allowed to faint like the average person, but rather to first drop to their knees and then fall face down to the ground. This precisely planned fainting is considered the most professional way to lose consciousness, and it even has a name. It's the fainting at attention. This rule is so absurd that you don't even know whether to get angry or laugh out loud. But at least you understand why British soldiers who faint during the summer all fall the same way, like wooden boards. Close your eyes and imagine you've been a royal guard for a few hours. You are stationed in front of one of the Queen's palaces. You are immobile, and you are not allowed to talk, laugh, or move as you please. This job is a bore. What can you do to pass the time without breaking the strict rules of the British royal guard? You have no choice but to use your mind, because your body is not at all in control when you are on duty. So there you are, humming your favorite song in your head, without of course making any sound. A few minutes later, you imagine that you are in your living room, popcorn in hand, watching the movie you saw the day before. And without realizing it, your shift is already over. You've beaten the boredom with flying colors, but you're thinking that maybe you're going crazy. Let me reassure you, far from it. Revisiting a movie in your mind or singing in your head are quite common practices among royal guards to cope with boredom. However, after this exceptional day of work, you prefer to return to the reality in which you can watch as many movies as you want on a real TV or listen to music with the volume turned up. Now comes Michael Fagan, a Briton born in 1948. This man single-handedly rocked the Royal Guard in 1982 and has been the shameful secret of the Queen's army ever since. What could this Michael have done to terrify one of the most powerful armies in the world? You might think he's a dangerous terrorist who caused a lot of casualties. Well, you're way off base. Michael has never caused any casualties. He is just a deranged man who was obsessed with Queen Elizabeth. On July 9th, 1982, at 7 a.m., he quietly put a ladder more than four meters high on the brick wall of Buckingham Palace, taking advantage of the hasty departure of one of the royal guards. It is thus the simplest of the world that he straddles the wall and finds himself inside the royal palace. But seeing that no one notices him, he wanders around as he pleases until he finds himself in the queen's bedroom. And to top it all off, he is the one who wakes her up. This is how this crazy man literally made a fool of the British Royal Guard by breaking into the Queen's bedroom. It's a mind-blowing story, which surely made you change your mind about the irreproachability of the Royal Guard. But now at least you know that perfection does not exist, even in the Royal Guard. After the crazy man who shattered the myth of the infallible British Royal Guard, it's now the turn of Fergie, the American pop singer, to drag Her Majesty's guards through the mud. What did she do too? What is certain is that she did not allow herself to break into the Queen's room. But to understand better, I have to show you a clip of her London Bridge video. Yes, I know, it is strictly forbidden to touch a royal guard. It's no secret anymore. But as you can see, even though the guards in Fergie's video are just actors, the fact that she touched them and danced with them in this seductive way was quite shocking and disrespectful to the real royal guard. This video clip is definitely the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, you're sad to see your favorite myth of the rigid, impassive, infallible, and almost superhuman Royal Guard shattered. These were 10 secrets the Royal Guard doesn't want you to know. Tell us in the comments which one surprised you the most. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell to receive all notifications and not miss anything from our upcoming content.